super maximum. Were the what? The All right, she asked about where the pedophiles are housed. Now, it varies. When they first come in, some of them will get filtered into the general population. And one of the, one of the early stories in my book is a pedophile who's getting smashed in the shower by skinheads because they find out that he's a sex offender. They leave him in the shower, he's whimpering in this pool of blood. And they come out of the shower, and this big guy goes up to them and says, How come we can still hear the chomo dog? Chomo means child molester, and dog is what they say. it's like saying mate. The head skinhead says, This big guy has got like cobwebs tattooed down his neck. We smash the chomo good dog, and the big guy says, Not good enough dog. So he goes into the shower. And it's all casually, and it's like he's trying to break the guy's head open like a coconut. It's like crap, 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 crap. This guy looks like he's dead. Ten minutes later, the guards walk the pod, and they start yelling, Lock down, everyone, lock down. I run to my cell door, put my face to the window, because I want to see what's going on with this guy. And he's on the stretcher. I'll never forget, I still have nightmares about these things every week. Not only was the blood leaking from his head, there was like a yellow fluid, like brain stuff was coming out. Now that's called convict justice. Um, so what they do is, they try and separate them from the general population. But then what happens is, the general population cook the food for the sex offenders. They have whole prison yards now full of sex offenders in Arizona. They put dirty syringes that guys with hepatitis C have used into the food and feces. On one occasion in northern Arizona, they broke the thermometers open and put the mercury from the thermometers into the food that was going to the sex offenders. And loads of them were hospitalized critically ill because of that. Even the guards tip the prisoners off as to who the sex offenders are. And when I put this to the in on the internet, I asked the public what they felt about convict justice. The majority of the comments that we got in I'm not condoning violence to anyone. The majority of the comments that came in, the, the, um, the public, were for convict justice of sex offenders. Does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. Um, given that she got away with it, did you ever, ever have any clue that you were going to be, you know, it sounded like a bit of a shock when the police arrived from the exit? Do I wish I got away with it? I'm not sure I'm loaded a question. I think, no, it's a, that's a good question. I think I needed to go through it to mature as a person. Before this, I was emotionally mature, I was a party person, taking care of all my fair friends, getting them high. My priorities were all wrong. Going through this has completely set my life in a whole new direction. I get to speak to young people all over the place now, and I get all these emails back from them saying, you know, we go in the hall, and we don't listen to our teachers when it comes to drugs. But your story's gripped us, and it's put, enough, put us off getting involved in drugs and crime. The students who stay behind and ask me questions at these talks in the high schools, the teachers come up to me at the end, and they're amazed, and they say, those lads that stay behind to ask these questions, they're the hardest to reach students. Um, so for me to be, it's like a privilege for me to be able to go around now and, and get to impact so many people, and that so many people are interested in my life story, and that it can be used for good. So it was like I needed to go through this. I'm a, I'm a yoga practicing vegetarian, like I said. And it's like I'm trying to restore my karma for everything I've done previously um, by doing this. And, and I'm happy with my life, the direction it's gone in. And I don't begrudge the jail conditions. I'm actually glad that they were that intense, that, that it's created such an interesting story that, that, that people are, are like to hear about. And it impacts them and inspires them. So, all right, thank you for that. Anyone else? Got anyone? Questions? Yeah. I'm very confused about the jail remand system and the prison system. Okay. As a British person and the idea that innocent until proven guilty and then the American perspective seems completely different. Yeah. How can he be running such a horrendous situation for potentially innocent um, prisoners? Would he not 
surely at the very least you, that you'd think that they would move him into the prison system where the people have been convicted and are supposedly, you know, definitely guilty. Yeah. Whereas in your uh, jail system that you spent two years in, there must have been people who were found innocent and who were let go. Yes. That's a very good question. Um, there's a presumption of innocence in America that you've been held for the crimes that you've been charged with, you're presumed innocent, so you shouldn't be getting punished as harshly as, as the prisoners who are actually sentenced. Yet, conditions in the jail are way worse than conditions in the prison system. Prisoners get into the jail and sign plea bargains just so they can get into the prison system where you get three meals a day and the air conditions working a bit better. And it's, they're not as cockroach infested. I think it's by design. It's like the jail is a machine just processing people as fast as possible. They want to get out of there because of the conditions, pumping them into the prison system. It's all about money a lot of it as well. It's big business. They get $30,000 a year per prisoner, these private prison corporations. All your telephone calls. I, call, I, I made a call to England. It was five minutes, flat call. They charge us 50 quid. They sell you all these products at the inmate store because they don't feed you enough. You've got, to, you've got to supplement that, and it's all stuff that they're making money on. Some of these states now in America, they're, they're spending more on the prisons than they are on education. And it's big business. The contractors make political contributions to the politicians. They change the law so all this can, can keep going. And it's just like a money go round, that's how it works. They tried to get rid of the three strikes law out of California. The people who put the money up to repeal that, to stop it getting repealed, one of the people who put the money up was the founder of Broadcom, who, who provide exclusive telephone services to the uh, prison system in California. And the three strikes law came about legally. So the money that was put for that would come from, a lot of it come from the guards union, because they were looking to expand their empire as well. So it's all big business and stuff that's going on behind the scenes, a lot of which the public isn't aware of. And um, yeah, it's a very good observation. It's, it's by design. Yeah. Okay. Don't you go to have inspectors to check on you guys? You know what? When the county health inspectors came in, the air conditioning was miraculously blowing at Gale Force. Um, the food changed. And as soon as the health inspectors left the building, a couple of days, however long it was, they were in the jail. Every, the, the, the air conditioning went right back to the broken setting. The food went right back to the red death. And potato peelings with human hair in them, and yeah, it's it's all by design, okay? It's it's all it's, he's structured. Sheriff Joel Powell structured it to be like that. Don't you guys have like people who ask you questions about how you you know how you're treating you in the jail, like you know supervisors? It's like that guard said to me: the world has no idea what's really going on in here. Most of the prisoners. It's drug crimes and theft of drugs. It's not full of murders in there like I thought it was. It completely changed my, pers my perspective on it. I saw what it's really like. It's people from the lower socioeconomic groups as well who can't afford attorneys and then they just have no way to defend themselves in court because they get public defenders who aren't acting in their best interests. And um, it just goes on and on and on like that. I mean, it's, it's sickening. No, it was all seized. I actually no, I see. yeah, it was all gone. Um, I'm actually in debt right now to become public speaking an author to start my own business to give myself a job. We did recently get an inquiry about a Hollywood movie deal, so if that goes through, I would find things financially would change for me. And I, but I, I wouldn't treat money like I treated it previously. I would pay my parents back for starters, coming up with that money that they, they got, and just live sensibly. But you weren't doing legitimately, didn't you? Yeah, all my money that I made legitimately in, as a stockbroker, all my retirement account and everything was seized by the state of Arizona. Yeah. What would you say 